you need to know that all of Flint is not like that. All of Flint is not drug dealers and criminals and and uh, users of the system. There are really good people in Flint who are surrounded by people who don't have anything to look forward to. So it's this strange balance and a very delicate balancing act that is performed on a daily basis by everybody. My older sister left and went to Texas. My baby sister left, but she's still in Texas. And my younger sister stayed and is a one of the best nurses in Hurley's pediatrics emergency room you will ever meet. And I have heard some terrible stories of what happens when these warring factions and families have children in the hospital and say there's a shooting by the people who live on this side of the street and they shoot at the people who live at the corner and they hit someone and it's a child and that child from the corner goes to the hospital this family here comes to the hospital to finish the job there have been fights and shootouts at funerals because if there's no aspiration, there's no hope, there's no nothing. And alongside that, you have the next generation who are my nieces and nephews who are being raised by awesome parents who want the best for them, but are in fear for them at all times because you never know when something is going to pop off. You never know when someone is going to change your life forever with a single bullet. For me, I really enjoyed this series. I think it's a raw depiction of what happens when commerce is put ahead of civility. And I don't blame General Motors for leaving, but I think their pursuit for cheaper labor completely dismantled the city of Flint. I also believe that the state of Michigan never truly had a plan B. Partially believing, I believe, that General Motors will always be here and the tax revenue will continue to come in in cities like Flint and Detroit and Lansing and Hamtramck and Kalamazoo and all uh, Benton Harbor, all these cities that are now, you know, in ill repair. I think that it was never a plan B to say, well, if something happened with cars or if if people no longer drove or if we all ran out of gasoline and, and no one drove cars anymore, what would we be or what would be our economic system? What would be our product that we put out? And now they're scrambling to find that. and. It comes in the guise of casinos right now. There are a lot of casinos, but they're only adding to the problem because people who have pipe dreams go to the casino and spend their whole checks, their retirement, trying to find ways out or become prey to people waiting for them to walk out of the casino to see what did you do today. And then they're... On the other side, I still like those amazing people 
who stop and have the most beautiful conversations with you in Family Dollar, in Myers, in Walmart, who do not allow the surroundings of the city to change who they are on the inside. And I really wish that the documentary or the, the series interview some of those people who have not given up hope, who are just here because this is where their family is. Home is where your family is. And so it was not always an option for everybody to leave. It was not always the best timing for someone to leave and experience another place in the country, even though there was nothing here. I think for some people it's more comforting to struggle with your loved ones than to be away from them doing well and, and you have to know that they're struggling without you back there. You know what I mean? But I I want I do I'm doing this video for two reasons. For one, I really wanted to make sure that people who watch this who've never been to Flint, who've never if you've never heard of Flint to just know that the depiction of it today is not how it's always been. This is as of the destruction of the city from the loss of General Motors. And the other reason is because it focuses on cops. And whenever I see this picture of my mom, I think of what cops meant back then and how important they were to the city and how respected they were and how their presence helped to keep the city in check. It's amazing the difference. It's amazing the change in respect level from the youth of my growing up, well, how we respected police officers to the youth today who have zero respect or tolerance for the police force of Flint. And I can imagine that the children of the cops today worry every single day, is my mom coming home? Will my dad be here for my birthday? Because the playing field is different. And I mentioned CATT, the Criminal Area Target Team. They did a great job. They're still doing a great job. There are not nearly as many murders and shootings and violent acts as there were just a few years ago. But there's so much more left to be done. And there needs to be so much infrastructure put back into the city. Because right now, I don't know if... <sighs> I hate to say it. But I don't know if the city could survive another 15 years in the way it is now. Before turning into pure hell on earth. For some people it's hell now. I don't see it as hell. But I've been gone a long time. So I have fresh eyes. And I may be nostalgic. For how it used to be. But I do think that it's an SOS. That there needs to be some investment. Put into the city from somewhere. China. Any place. I really don't care. Because without the jobs. Without a sense of purpose. The future generations will be worse than those that are there now. So give. Flint Town. A watch. Learn some stuff experience some stuff, kind of see 
what it's like today. It's empty. It's ran down. It's burnt up. You know, in some areas, it looks like there's been a 30-year war here. And GM has only been gone about 10 solid years. Hmm. It's really hard for me because I can see riding around with my friends in high school and the streets are full and at every red light is somebody you know and you're honking the horn or you I had a convertible and my top is down and, and we're all having just good times. 